Good evening. It's my pleasure to introduce tonight's Visibility Award recipient. Greg Rickhart has been on the cast of The Young and Restless for 10 years, earning him the Daytime Emmy Award along with numerous nominations. But it's Greg's commitment to the LGBT movement that sets him apart. Greg made the brave move to come out in 2013. Since then, he's been a strong voice for the name of equality. When the anti-gay corporate policies and contributions of Chick-fil-A came to light, Greg was a vocal dissident in the co-op for the Huntington Post and spread the word to 50,000 Twitter followers. Greg is an act, also active in the Gay and Lesbian Straight Education Network. He's strongly committed to providing youth a safe place free of, from bullying. Greg is truly a leader for equality. Let's take, a, let's take a look at some of the Greg's recent work. You know what relationship I'm really interested in is that, uh, what was that, Kelly and um, Adam. 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 Oh, bad. Bad, huh? How bad? Yeah, they had secrets. Secrets. Oh, you don't know that. <laughs> I know. They said they'd just gotten married, right? But there was no newlywed vibe. Mm. Even we had a newlywed vibe. Uh, you still do. But we're talking about Kelly now, so. I agree. We still do. Well, you're just saying that because we're sweating. Uh, no, I'm not. I love you. Well, congratulations, Mr. Sherman. You've done just about everything but give yourself a lethal injection. I'm not afraid to die for my country. They don't have a monopoly on martyrdom, you know. Leaving aside the question of who they are. Why did you target Rossi Mukhtar? He's Iranian. Is he a terrorist? Do they stop and ask if the Americans they've killed are terrorists? No. You have to fight fire with fire. They changed the rules of engagement, not me. What? Oh, there's no good magazines to read. That's it. I mean, you, you're not at all nervous about this? Oh, it's a piece of cake. I've done it like a million times. A million? I don't give or take. I'd be a pretty hypocritical peer counselor if I didn't practice what I preached. Right. Seriously. It's no big deal. And the most embarrassing part is when they ask what kind of high-risk behavior you've engaged in in the past three to six months. The only thing I can come up with is eating carbs after 9 p.m. and jaywalking. So this is just one more step. One more step before you come back to us. Because you need to come back. Okay? I love you so much. It's a sign of solidarity for our LGBTI Russian brothers and sisters and our straight Russian allies. Your fight is our fight. When I was 13, a friend of a friend committed suicide because he was gay. I wish he had had a safe space. I remember being bullied as a kid, so that's the close connection for me. I also remember being a bully. You're perfect just the way you are. You yeah. don't need to be a bully if you're insecure about something going on in your life. And if you are being bullied, having a voice and having someone tell you that it's all going to be just fine yeah. and that everything is okay is also equally important. Join me in welcoming our 2014 Visibility Award recipient, Greg Rickhart. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so much. Nothing makes you feel older than watching yourself on television from 10 years ago. <clears throat> okay, so for those of you who don't know who I am, as you just learned, my name is Greg Rickhart. I'm an actor on The Young and the Restless. And for the past 10 years, I've played a character named Kevin Fisher. Yeah. That guy knows who I am. Now, Kevin, as he can tell you, <laughs> has done a multitude of bad things in his life. Like, objectively bad things, including jewel theft, hiding a dead body, arson, spreading of chlamydia, and... 
Well, it's a, it's a living. Um, and my personal favorite, electrocution of a stripper by rigging her pole. Hey, or as you might all call it, just another night in New Orleans. I really am so honored to be standing in front of you all tonight and so grateful to Chad Griffin and to the HRC for this Visibility Award. When I looked at the previous recipients of this honor, that include President Obama, President Clinton, Senator Clinton, Steven Spielberg, and oh my God, Monique. I certainly do not feel worthy of this. I have, though, been an ally for LGBT rights for quite some time, and am very proud of the work my friend Clementine Ford and I have done on the anti-bullying front. Thank you. We were organizing a fundraiser, and someone asked me if I had been bullied when I was a kid. And the answer was yes, but the first thought I had was of a boy named Josh in my class who I used to bully. And the memory of that made me, and still makes me, very sad. So to tell you a little bit about my 10-year-old self, I was super cute. <laughs> I was spending my formative years on Staten Island in the 1980s, which meant I talked like this. And the community and the culture that I was a part of had very clearly defined gender roles. And from a very young age, I knew that I didn't fit in. But I was scrappy, and I was smart. So while the other boys my age were just being kids, I was very keenly observing their behavior. And through trial and error, I figured out what behavior was okay and what behavior was not. For instance, what toys was it okay to like? My He-Man figures, totally fine. But my sister's Barbie doll and Miles Lawrence, my Cabbage Patch Kid, best played with in the privacy of my bedroom. <laughs> Talking about whether the Mets or the Yankees were a baseball team, okay but talking about who had better uniforms, not okay. And when I was assigned a project in class on someone noteworthy whom I admired, I knew I wasn't like the other boys when I proudly chose Civil Shepherd. <laughs> For the record, 27 years later, I choose Civil Shepherd. <laughs> anyway, I was 10 years old. I was terrified about being gay, and I wanted to be just like the other boys. So I made fun of Josh, even though we'd been friends when we were younger. And 25 years later, the thought of that filled me with sadness and shame. Here I was, blaring my lungs out at Prop 8 rallies, writing op-ed pieces for the Huffington Post, calling people out incessantly on Twitter who I thought were bullies, but I felt like such a hypocrite. Thankfully, Facebook came to the rescue. I found Josh, and I sent him a very belated apology. In my message to him, I said I wish that I could go back and tell the 10-year-old version of myself that I didn't need to make somebody else feel bad or less than to try and make myself feel better. And I told him I was sorry for every unkind thing I ever said or did to him. He wrote back a really lovely reply told me he had long since forgiven me and anyone else who was ever unkind to him. And I'm so grateful that I have that story and that I was able to heal that wound. But we all know that there are far too many stories that still don't have that same happy ending. Bullied LGBT youth are still committing suicide. Same-sex couples are still being denied benefits afforded to heterosexual couples. And Rick Perry thinks we're all a bunch of alcoholics. <laughs> no, 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 come on, come on, come on. In Rick Perry's defense, in Rick Perry's defense, he is a big, dumb asshole. <laughs> this is why the work that the HRC is doing on a daily basis to end LGBT discrimination is so important. Thanks in large part to the HRC, the majority of Americans now support marriage equality. Now, I am so grateful to be living in this time of our civil rights movement, and I'm amazed at how fast everything is changing. It's so fucking exciting, really. After President Obama came out in support of, of same-sex marriage, politicians began tripping over themselves to lend their support. I remember the time well. 
Domu was just overturned, Rob, the handsome guy sitting beside me at table 32, and I were in our backyard. There were burgers, there was rosé, and our dog just got skunked by, well, got sprayed by a skunk. He's a, he's a puggle named Fred. So cleaning him up was not a lot of fun. Rob and I worked really hard, and at one point, Fred had so much tomato juice and sauce all over him, he looked like the canine version of Carrie. <laughs> so maybe it was the elation over Doma being overturned. Maybe it was the skunk fumes. Most likely it was the rosé. Um, but that night, I wanted to bask in this feeling of equality. I had long been an out gay man in my life, but was ready to stop being evasive about the issue publicly. So Rob and I took a selfie. I posted it. <laughs> I posted it on Twitter, and I felt equal. We've been together since 2005. We met, thanks. We met at a party in North Hollywood that had this ice luge, and there was like scantily clad men and women that were doing shots down this ice luge or as you might all call it, just another Sunday morning in New Orleans. <laughs> we're not married yet, but if we were to get married today, we've got 19 states where we can do that. I think Louisiana would be a fun number 20, don't you? The sooner we get to 50, the sooner stories like mine or the ones with with tragic endings become a part of LGBT history. I thank the HRC again for their tireless efforts and I'm so proud to be a committed soldier for the cause. And I thank you all for being here because showing up is more than half the battle. Thank you. And finally, I would like to thank my incredible network of supportive family and friends, mom, dad, Carrie, Michael, my amazing nephews, Luca and Nicholas, and most importantly, my Rob. Uh, you make me laugh all the time, and it's really fun sharing this life with you. So thank you all so much. This, this means the world to me. Thank you.